So apparently you are a nobody without a name, didn't the posters show? Those ones that were in shops back in the 70s and 80s, I think they were. I'm mainly gonna be tackling sound quality in this video because you can get lots of other information elsewhere and I'm just gonna get straight to the point. When you turn this amplifier on, there is a little bit of audible hum to start with. That's obviously the transformer, toroidal transformer hum, but it's not like it's massive and when you sit down and turn your music on, you don't hear it at all. But one weird thing about this amplifier is that the power inlet is actually wobbly and this is to stop vibrations going up the cord into the socket and affecting you know, resonances inside the case. It's not a manufacturer's fault. I actually thought I might have to give this back. So the brand new price of this amp in the UK at the moment is £3,800 and no doubt, I'll stand corrected on this, but similar in convertible currencies in the US and Europe. But that's actually quite a lot for a pure analog amplifier without a DAC or digital inputs. So does it actually stack up? Just a couple of things to say first though, whenever you do hi-fi reviews, ideally you wanna use a range of speakers, obvious reasons, and you might find that a particular amp shines with a particular pair of speakers. But also you're trying to do it because you just wanna get a handle on what the amplifier is really about. Names say that the slew rate of this amplifier is high and actually double that of its predecessor. And as I've said before, slew rate is the speed of change of the amplifier's output voltage or current compared to its input. But what this means, and you'll see some audio files say this, is that you need less power output to create the same or similar level of dynamics, the start or stop ability of, 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 of the music. And presumably that's down to the fact that the amplifier is able to respond quicker to the signal and then therefore make the music dynamic. The first lovely thing you notice about this amplifier when you turn it on, a standout trait, is this really nice, deep, thick bass that rides along with the music really well. Also, another standout trait, a nice, clean, insightful mid-range. I was wondering when I first started playing music how it's possible to get an amp that's so dynamic with only 80 watts into eight ohms. And I was playing Underworld's Jumbo, which has a really nice deep bass line that basically showed this off. But the more that you listen to this amplifier, the more you catch yourself hearing cymbals really shine or the twanginess and transience of a guitar string, like the track by Fleetwood Mac on their Rumours album, Never Going Back Again. But this doesn't just epitomize those particular instruments or sounds within music, but it's symptomatic of the fluidity of this amplifier in the mid-range. It's quite exuberant and lovely and makes music very real indeed. The raspiness and texture of synth notes when I played the track Hymn by Vangelis shows how realistic this amplifier is and one of the most realistic in that area that I've ever heard. It shows off this mid-centric character that I've been talking about before. Soundstage, there is a sense, I think, that it's nice, it's decent, and it comes high and low. Also, it's a pretty neutral amplifier with well-recorded music, but it's leaning on being a little too forward with my PMC speakers that are tuned similarly, especially on some types of music, and when you increase volume as well, there's a sense of lots of treble air in the recording on those types of tracks. Some tracks, not all tracks, but I reiterate, it's just related to these speakers I found. With Bukart's S400 Mark IIs and Kef's LS50 Metas, the synergy is superb. 
No BS, just the right amount of treble inflection and warmth, and it suits the tonal character of these speakers, and particularly the slightly rolled off top treble of the Kefs. Okay, people who know me know that I love Hegel amplifiers and I actually bought this one. So I'll try and be as balanced as I possibly can. But this H390 is about the same price as the name when you take off its rune readiness and its chord cutest-esque DAC quality, which is about where that DAC in the Hegel sits, which is incidentally the DAC that I actually use to test both of these amps. But mid-range is actually less pristine and precise against the name. Also less separation and less layering with the Hegel in those kind of upper treble frequencies of the mid-range. Although admittedly it's going to be dependent upon lots of speakers and speaker pairing. But when you play some audiophile stuff like the cliched track Yellow's Oh Yeah, you know that one that always gets played at all audiophile shows, and it's been done to death. <laughs> there is a sense that the Hegel, well not a sense, it's obvious, the Hegel just has more grip over the music and also speed as electronic sounds in that track transition from left to right speakers. It's quite emphatic in these areas against the name and also you don't have to push the amp as hard to achieve this. So the Hegel might not sound, relatively speaking, as transparent and as focused in the mid-range compared to the name and conveying a sense of detail, although you can sort this out in the H390 using a better DAC than the cutest, but where the H390 has it over the name is conveying much bigger sense of soundstage width-wise and also bass is under better, tighter dynamic control. So the H390 goes down a little bit deeper than the name, but bass is quicker and faster and less diffuse. In other words, dynamic. Again, I'm not talking in absolute terms, I'm talking in relative terms. And you do notice this particularly as you turn the volume up. This is possibly or probably down to the Hegel's high damping factor. And I was trying the track DeLorean Dynamite by Todd Turya on his It's Album Time album. It's one of my test tracks, or the whole album's a, a test album, where that bass, you get the fast, duh, 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 duh. it was really, really obvious to suss out the differences I've just described between these two amplifiers on that score. It's possible, and this is sort of shooting from the hip, but it's the Hegel's brute motor power and current over the names 80 watts into eight ohms that gives these Hegel characteristics in the comparison between these two amplifiers. And that may be added to by the fact that I'm testing speakers in the 85 to 88 dB sensitive type range. But certainly from what I'm hearing, relative to the Hegel, the Supernate 3 trades a bit of forcefulness and gutsiness in its delivery and staging, having slightly lesser bass dynamics to the Hegel, but offering a more headphone-esque assault on your senses in terms of detail and mid-range. And this name Supernate 3 is easily the most insightful and detailed of all the amps here. This amplifier was actually quite a bit cheaper than the name, but much the same differences exist between the Hegel and the name in the sense 
that you've got really good sound stage, but instead of being width wise, it's actually depth wise, but it's also got authority over music against the name. The refinement and richness in the mid range and treble is there, which the name comparatively doesn't have. Obviously you can't make sort of immutable truths about amplifiers because it's all about speaker matching and the name tends to work better I found with slightly more tonally rich or refined speakers. This kinky studio though harmonically and timbrally is just so nice. It really stands out and it's really a nice feature. This amplifier is more neutral than the name. It's dynamically the improver. It has more grip over the name, but it doesn't have the textural detail in the mid range, the insight and just level of resolution that the name has. If you've got slightly forward speakers or neutral speakers, this amplifier is the ticket, a lovely amplifier that's really well made, like the name is too. And it's a kind of left field idea to getting you loads for your money. Essentially, to encapsulate loads of listening and to summarise, the NAD doesn't quite resolve as much as the name when I was using Acutis DAC into analogue inputs of both of these amplifiers. Remember that the NAD digitises its analogue input. Compared to the name, it doesn't work quite as well with the Bucarts and the Kefs but it works better with the PMCs with their slightly peaked up treble. Whilst it does lose resolution over the name, it appeals to those who just want music a little bit more rounded. Bass Dynamics is actually tighter with this amplifier than the name. Also, it might be the one to buy if you're sensitive to any level of resolution in the music because it's got a lovely tone to it. But what's weird is that it has this tonal thickness throughout its sound, but where bass dynamics is demanded, it's still there in the lower registers. So even though that this amplifier is actually more expensive, think of it as a good balance between streaming capability and amplifier capability, because after all, as an all-in-one, that's the purpose for which it's designed. The Eigentact Class D modules that it contains are not sharp sounding at all. Sometimes Class D gets a bad cop. This amp is not like that in its tonal character at all. But as I say, I would pair this with slightly forward or forward speakers to get the best balance. If you like what I do and want to support me and ensure my sustainability, trust me, you don't make much money from hi-fi reviews, then I'm trialing offering Patreon-only content for each video. Also, you get system and buying advice, ad-free videos, and it doesn't cost much. Check the link in the description below.